Come with me, come and see all the wonders there will be in my stories, in my songs, in everything where fun belongs. We'll meet heroes, giants bold, is it lands both hot and cold, have magic tricks to shiver your skin, laugh galore with animals in our world of fun. Hi, Piper, hi! Today for Tale Time, I have a story about a man who preferred flattering words to honest affection. He was a rich merchant who had three beautiful daughters. One day, he decided to find out if they loved him. And so, he asked them. Eldest daughter, how much do you love me? As my life, father dear. Very good, very good. And how much do you love me, second daughter? Oh, better than the whole world. Very good, very good. And now, youngest and most beautiful of all my daughters, how much do you love me? Father, dear, I love you as fresh meat loves salt. What? Is that all you give me in return for all I've given you? Out of my house! <laughs> Not knowing where to go, the girl wandered on and on until she found herself near a marsh, where the rushes grew tall and swayed like corn. She was a clever girl and thought that if any robbers saw her, they might attack her and steal her jewels. So she made herself an outfit from the rushes which hid her finery. She put on a cap to hide her long blonde hair, and when she finished, no one would have taken her for the daughter of a wealthy man. And so she wandered on, looking for a place to stay. At last, she came to a big, grand-looking house. What is it you want, Missy? I wish for a night's lodging, please, ma'am. I will scrub and clean for you in return. Well, here's luck indeed. Inside with you, dearie. Get to work on that lot over there. The cook and the other servants soon began calling her cap -o rushes because of her peculiar outfit. Now, it happened that the master of the house had a very handsome son, and as it was his birthday, a huge ball was held in the house. The servants were allowed to watch from a balcony, but Kappa Rushes refused to go down because she was a good dancer and feared that if she heard the music, she would start to dance and give herself away. But alas, she couldn't sit still. Throwing off her robe of rushes, she ran to the ballroom and started dancing. The handsome son singled her out immediately and danced with her through most of the night. Just before dawn, the young man implored her to tell him her name. No, I cannot tell you my name, sir, and I can never, never dance with you again. I must say goodbye. Kappa Rushes ran upstairs as fast as she could and just had enough time to put on her robe of rushes when the servants came in. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. The old place is in an uproar. They're all searching for that beautiful stranger. The young master declares he will die of love if he does not find her. Young men don't die of love. He will find someone else. But alas, day by day, the young master grew thinner and thinner and paler and paler. And Caparushes still said nothing. Until one day... The doctors say that unless the young master finds that girl today... Kappa Rushes went and looked in at the young man, who was so weak and worn with love for her that her heart melted. And she thought of a way to revive him. She fetched the village fiddlers, and she went to his bedside and threw off her robe of rushes. Play, fiddlers. Play your best. <laughs> beautiful dancer. I don't care who you are, we must be married. Everyone from miles around came to the wedding, and among the guests was Caparush's father, who had lost his memory with the shock of losing his youngest daughter. And when Caparush saw him, she ordered all the food cooked without salt. So the food looked tasty, but tasted terrible. Oh, now I remember. I remember. I had a daughter once whom I dearly loved, and when I asked her how much she loved me, she said, as fresh meat loves salt, and I turned her out. 
But now I see she loved me best of all. I love you both. Daughter! Fiddlers! Strike up a merry tune. And they all danced happily ever after.